Hi everyone. It is so good to be sharing God's word with his precious people through this YouTube channel. We have been looking at the subject the mind our greatest asset. We have done three parts and this is the fourth and final one. In my last video we have looked at the story of the 12 spies all of them leaders of their tribes sent out to spy the promised land Joshua and Caleb they saw the enemy as bread with their defenses departed from them whereas the 10 they saw themselves as grasshoppers in their own eyes the 10 they got exactly what they saw they died in the wilderness while the two rose up to conquer the land to help us understand and see what had got wrong i shared two examples of the elephant and the little eagle when god saw that his people could not obey him because of what had happened to their minds and their imaginations he decided to make a new covenant as we saw in hebrews 8:10 and hebrews 10:16 let us now look at how god writes his word on our hearts and minds coming right up Aggie and I have a deep God-given passion to serve people the depressed the broken-hearted and the spiritually needy help them lay a firm foundation of the word in their lives and see them walk out of their problems through the application of God's word and into everything that God has planned for them Before we get into the content of this video if you haven't already subscribed to this channel please consider doing so and click the bell icon right by it so that you can be notified each time we post a new video let us pray Father we thank you for your presence here with us that you will never leave us nor forsake us we thank you for our union with jesus and all your blessings that flow to us through him father today we give ourselves to you so that you can pour yourself into us and out through us to others we set our minds to be open to revelation and understanding through the holy spirit in jesus' name so how does god write his word on our hearts let us look at psalm 45:1 to see what it says it says my heart is indicting a good matter i speak of the things which i have made touching the king My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. The Lord he will use our tongues to write his laws on our hearts. Further, Hebrews 4:12 helps us understand how this happens. It says, "For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword." piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is the discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart this verse says that the word of god is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart 
the word discern means that the word helps us to see something the word thoughts is the greek word entomesis which means to form and intense of the heart is the greek word ennoia which means on the imagination so intense of the heart means on the imagination of the heart so what we have is that the word of god when spoken comes into our minds and imaginations and paints a picture on the canvas of our imagination and helps us to see that word as a picture we are constantly using our imagination in this way for example if i say i saw a surfer on his surfboard surfing the waves you see the whole scene being played out in your imagination so hebrews 4:12 is telling us about the things being formed in our imagination and as the word comes to us through hearing reading or meditation matthew 12:34 says for out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh and proverbs 23:7 says for as he thinketh in his heart so is he now both matthew 12:34 and proverbs 23:7 are referring to the creative part of our being so it is on the imagination that the lord wants to write his word and this will become the road map of our lives this is what vision is all about the word of god must come into our hearts and into our lives written on the canvas of our imagination therefore we must guard our imagination as peter exhorts us to in 1 peter 1:13 he says wherefore gird up the loins of your mind the word mind is the greek word dianoia which is the imagination Peter refers to the imagination as loins and just like man is procreative through his loins in the same way our imagination is creative so guard it well Peter tells us there are two words for mind in the Greek language dianoia and dialogismai dianoia is the imagination which is right brain activity whereas dialogue is my is reasoning thinking analytical thinking or logic all left brain activity luke 151 says he had showed his strength with his arm he had scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts the greek word used for imagination here is dianoia acts 18:4 says and he reasoned in the synagogue every sabbath and persuaded the jews and the greeks the greek word used for reasoned is dialogus mind sadly most of our disciplines in the word have to do with the understanding and reasoning part of our mind which is the dialogus mind or left brain the lord commanded us to meditate in the word because in meditation we pictureize the word as we mutter it to ourselves this causes the word to be lodged in our imagination in picture form not easily forgotten the reason why we use our left brain so much is that we were taught to do so when we first went to school all we did was draw and look at pictures 
and maybe did some coloring and painting which developed the right brain but as we went to higher classes the right brain activity changed to left brain thereafter it was only the left brain being exercised and developed the right brain was hardly ever used so now when we come to the word we approach it in the same way left brain we seek to analyze and understand the word and memorize the word which though good is not the only destination for the word of god it should also reach our imagination where it will bear fruit the israelites were taught to meditate right from their childhood we have learned to use the left brain and so miss out on the power of having the word fill our imagination if the word fills our imagination it will create a self image that is word based helping us to have the right pictures in our imagination now knowing how important it is for the word to be lodged in our imagination we can intentionally allow the holy spirit to fill our minds and imagination with his word allow him to help us obey his word so that it gets written in our hearts and becomes our lifestyle when the lord's word fills our minds and imagination we will speak out of the abundance of our hearts and that will give direction to our lives our imaginations being filled with life giving and positive pictures we will get what we are focused on which is the goodness of life having understood these precious truths i applied them to various areas of of my life and was blessed to see how they worked let me share a few testimonies when we first moved into our new home a one bedroom flat we did so with just a bare minimum of furniture as i began to understand how the lord worked i started to ask for all that we needed for the house i would walk all through the rooms visualizing the things we needed that were not there as if they were there and would call them into being the furniture in the hall the wardrobes the television set the telephone the air conditioner and many other things as i did that each day visualizing with great expectancy and calling them into existence they all came to our great delight and we were filled with gratitude to the lord in 1994 i began to pray for a royal enfield bike i cut out a picture of it and i kept it under my pillow and every night before going to bed i would take that picture and look at it longingly with great hope and excitement i would lying in bed pretend that i was riding one changing gears accelerating with sound effects and so on enjoying the pleasure of owning one it all seemed so real to me the bike came within a year how we all rejoiced and thanked the lord about the same time i had a very severe back problem the doctor finally said that i would have to learn to manage the pain with painkillers and of course some exercise i prayed for 7 years and got myself prayed over by many but my healing eluded me until the lord showed me that i had put my faith in my painkillers 
and the picture that i had on the inside of me in my imagination was all wrong i saw myself as hurting and walking with great care lest i hurt my back i quickly changed that picture and continued to pray i even stopped the pain killers now i saw myself as running to catch a bus or a train which was an impossibility for me at that time the longing to run and walk briskly without a care began to grow in me again within a year i was completely healed running and brisk walking became a reality isn't the lord wonderful i will always remember with gratitude how pleasantly surprised i was when one day i could roll out of bed in an instant when earlier it took me several minutes to do the same then the lord caused me to believe for something that i thought was impossible he moved us into a three bedroom flat that we now live in it all started with a simple desire we were walking down the road to our office and passed a beautiful building that was nearing completion and i said to me i wish we were living in this building i immediately said let's pray what i meant was let us ask our heavenly father i remembered what aggy told me when we were married when she was a little girl she longed to live in a particular place later when we got married a building came up in that place and we bought our first flat in that building believing and visualizing for this flat began in 2002 in 2003 someone in that building got saved and we went to minister to her as we rode the lift up to that flat 501 I was very excited for now I would be able to visualize even better for having visited a flat there seeing a home we knew that this was the building we indeed wanted to live in I now had fodder for my imagination from then on practically every day I visualized going to that building riding the lift getting out at a particular floor sticking the key into the door lock opening the door walking around in the flat as if it were mine and come home as i did this i would pray in tongues and thank god for the provision to buy that flat the more i did this the more certain i got that we would soon be living there in december 2004 We heard that a flat in that building was saved. By March 2005, we moved into that flat 502, right opposite the flat we had visited. It was an impossible buy, but as the Lord Jesus says, "If thou canst, all things are possible to him that believeth." Our joy knew no bounds. We still thank the Lord for this beautiful house, and every time we testify about His goodness. we are refilled with that joy that we first expressed and experienced with regards to ministry and church growth the lord began to lead me with the same laws and principles in 1995 my wife and i got a prophetic word that the lord would do something in our lives that would be beyond our imagination It was a church planting movement seminar and this word was given to us twice within 10 minutes I kept remembering this word from time to time but I couldn't imagine anything because it was beyond my imagination he said I believe when the Lord saw that I kept remembering that word he followed it up with the next step 
he woke me up one night in 1999 and asked me to read isaiah 49 i was in kanpur at the time visiting our mission work i got up and read the whole chapter and understood nothing except that it was a messianic passage but i would read it every day and sometimes two or three times a day it kind of gripped me in 2003 as was my habit i was reading the passage when suddenly a verse jumped out at me isaiah 49 and verse 18 where it says lift up thine eyes round about and behold all these gather themselves together and come to thee as i live saith the lord thou shalt surely clothe thee with them all as with an ornament and bind them on thee as a bride doeth this was a word picture and i got up and went to my window and looked out into the distance and did what the verse said i saw a huge number of people coming towards me and i sensed that they were the people that the lord was going to bring to us this then became my regular contemplation with great excitement i began to do this every day then in 2005 i said we moved into our new flat when that happened my faith skyrocketed i was convinced that this picture would come to pass it was in 2006 that things began to unfold we were a church of just 500 people but over a period of 4 years the lord added several thousands in uttar pradesh we had work in 15 districts but the lord helped us reach a total of 28 districts sadly we lost a lot of that harvest because we did not focus on our leadership which did not grow proportionately then in 2014 a team of church planters came alongside us and they trained us in a church planting strategy it was very simple it started with vision and prayer then much regular evangelism very practical discipleship starting small groups that it evolved into house churches and the final step was raising up leaders not only is the harvest being reaped but laborers are being trained and released into the harvest fields i thank god for this team and their investment in our work isaiah 49 is still lodged in my heart and i keep visualizing what the lord showed me knowing that there is more to come the lord showed us that nothing is impossible when we believe i still marvel with gratitude at how the lord brought it about we started this series with the saying remember it is an absolute law of your being that you must have something mentally before you will ever have it physically think about this for it is just what proverbs 23:7a says we saw how the lord introduced noah and mankind to the power of visualization which works as a law the lord god created man with the power to see and imagine the picture that we visualize in our imagination which is the beginning of the creative action when man could not obey him because his imagination was corrupted god decided to make a new covenant by which he would put his laws in their hearts and write it on their minds he did this through the work of jesus on the cross with our minds and imaginations sanctified we are now free to use its awesome creative power to transform our lives 
and the areas where we live. We do this by allowing the Holy Spirit to help us obey His Word so that it gets written in our hearts and becomes our lifestyle. When the Lord's Word fills our minds and our imagination, we will speak out of the abundance of our hearts and that will give direction to our lives, our imaginations being filled with life-giving and positive pictures, we will get what we are focused on, which is the goodness of life. The Lord bless you all. If you would like to support this channel and help us reach more people with God's truth, one of the best ways you could do so is by tapping the subscribe button and sharing it with others. God bless you as you do so. Amen.